In this video, we will show you how to replace your EGR valve. On this Lincoln Navigator, the location for this will be located along the top backside of the engine. Let's get into it. Okay friends, let's get started on our job. The first thing that we need to mention is you will have to remove the left front wheel. So make sure you're in a safe area that you can do so. We'll be doing that in a little bit. But first, make your way over to the driver's side front of the engine compartment to your coolant reservoir. Make sure it's cool to the touch. Turn this counterclockwise. Remove it to relieve any pressure from in the cooling system. Once you've done that, you can put this back on and we'll move along. Now we'll make our way over to the negative battery terminal. Use an eight millimeter to loosen the mounting bolt. Disconnect this and set it aside so it's making no contact with the battery. Next, we're going to move along to removing the upper intake. To do this, we're going to have to remove several other things. Let's start along the back side where the firewall is. On this plastic piece, you're going to find four seven millimeter headed bolts holding this in place to the firewall. Remove all four. There's one hidden behind here. That's what that looks like. Do the same to all. Now we can move up along the top of that plastic area. You're going to find that you have five of these metal clips. Carefully pry those out of position. That's what it looks like. We'll do the same to all. The next thing we'll do to remove the cowl is remove each of the wiper arms. To remove these, we'll use a small pocket screwdriver to remove the protective cap. Just give that a quick inspection. Under that, you'll find a 15 millimeter nut. Remove that nut. Before you remove the wiper arm with the wiper blade, it's a good idea to pay attention to exactly where your wiper blade sits originally on the windshield. That way, when you're putting it back on, you're sure that it'll be aligned properly. If you needed to, you could mark the windshield with some tape. That might help you out. Now we can take hold of that wiper arm. We're going to lift this up. Keep in mind that it is under spring tension, trying to force it back against the windshield. You don't want it to come down and potentially break the glass. Go ahead and give this a wiggle. We're trying to separate it from the wiper arm regulator. Let's give that a little wiggle. Slides right off. A quick inspection. Set it aside and do the same to the other wiper arm.
Once you have those out of the way, we're going to continue on to removing several Phillips head screws that hold the cowl down. You'll find one here, one here, one right here for the left side panel. After that, we'll continue on to the passenger side. Now for the passenger side panel, you'll find that you have another Phillips head really close to the driver's side one there in the center. And now I'll make my way to the other side of the vehicle. Now with the hood up, we're going to continue on to removing the seal that comes across the plastic cowl. Just lift up on one corner here. Set that aside. Let's make our way towards the center of the two pieces. We can gently separate these. Now at this point, we can leave these in this position. Right in the center, you're going to find a push clip. Let's remove that. To remove this push clip, use a trim tool or a small prying device. Get right inside here, pop this up and out of position. Once you have that separated, you should be able to lift this up and out of here. We'll set this aside. Now let's move along the front of the engine and remove the intake area. For this, you're going to find that you have two lines that come across the front. Let's pop those out of place. After you've done that, we'll continue on along the back side here. You can see that you have a hose that goes into this. We'll gently separate this from the boot, being careful not to damage it. With that separated, we'll continue on to the air temperature sensor. Squeeze this tab, pop it off of there, give it a quick check for corrosion. Assuming that looks good, we'll set that aside. Now we're going to continue on to our two 8mm headed clamps. You'll find you have one up here that holds it to the throttle body. Let's loosen that. Now we'll make our way down to this clamp right here with our 8mm as well. At this point we can take hold of this and pull it off of the throttle body. Give it a little wiggle and remove it from the air box. Now we can start removing the plastic cover from across the top of the upper intake. On this, you'll find that you have three 10 millimeter headed bolts. Remove all three. That piece is broken. The plastic should not come off. Remove the cover, give it a quick inspection, and set it aside. Now with that out of the way, you have a clear view of the two cables that lead to the throttle body. We're going to disconnect each of these and then the return spring. For this, let's grab onto this. You can give it a little tug. Pop this out of position. You can see it slides right in on this tab right here. With that out of position, you can keep pulling this a little bit, grab this cable, and swing it up and off of the area. Slowly release this. Now we'll release the spring. Just go ahead and grab onto that, pull it off of there. We'll make sure we set this aside so we do not lose it. Now let's remove the bracket from the intake. You'll find that you have two 10 millimeter headed bolts to remove. Remove the pair.
Take the bracket with the cables and set them aside towards the driver's side of the vehicle. Staying on the passenger side of the intake, we're going to disconnect this area of the PCV hose. For this, I'll just use a trim tool. You can also use a screwdriver. You just want to gently pull this off without damaging the rubber boot in any way because you will be reusing it. We'll give this a quick check, make sure it's still soft and pliable and it's not torn, worn, or damaged in any way. Follow that PCV line up along the top here. You'll find a wiring harness. We're just going to separate this. You can gently pry that down. Keep following this all the way to the top of the intake. On our application, we actually have a small clamp holding this in place. For this, we can use a flathead or an 8mm to loosen that clamp and remove it from the intake. Make sure that's soft and pliable as well. Set this aside. Let's make our way up here. We'll disconnect this. On it, you're going to find you have a little squeeze tab. Just go ahead and squeeze that in. A quick check for corrosion. Set that aside. Continuing on this side of the intake, you're going to find that you have two coolant hoses. These have coolant inside of them. So it's important to make sure that you pinch them off with something or at least plug them once you remove the hose. For this, you can use some hose pliers. We'll just grab right on this and restrict the flow of coolant through the hose. Now we'll just quickly do the same to the other one over here. Even though we have these restricted, it is still possible that there's coolant in this area. So just keep that in mind. We'll squeeze the clamp, slide it down. Grab onto that hose, give it a little twist to break it free. If it doesn't want to free up, you can try to use a hose pick of some sort. We'll just make sure it's soft and pliable, just like always. Now we'll do the same to the other one. Now we can move underneath the passenger side of the intake. You're going to find that you have two lines making their way into a rubber boot connected to the intake itself. Take hold of that and remove it from the intake. Set that aside. Now we can make our way over towards the other side of the intake. Disconnect the wiring harness or your throttle body. Squeeze this tab, pull it off, quick check for corrosion, set that aside. We'll make our way up here, remove this hose, and then the electrical connector. Let's use our trim tool for that just to break it free. You can also use a small screwdriver. Now let's make our way in between the oil fill tube and the power steering reservoir. You're going to find a bracket with a 10 millimeter headed nut holding it in place. Remove that nut. Now let's remove the stud that was behind that bracket. This mounted stud is a 13 millimeter and it holds the oil fill tube to the intake. There's that. At this point, we can move this around as needed. 
Now that we have that out of the way, let's make our way to the vacuum booster hose. You'll find that you have a clamp that you can squeeze using some long nose pliers and pull the hose off of the intake. Let's continue making our way back on the driver's side of the intake. We'll disconnect this electrical connector. Just under that, you're going to find a rubber area that connects onto this. Let's grab onto that, pull it off. Quick check. Now we can make our way a little bit rearward and just underneath that, and you're going to find this area with two rubber hoses and one electrical connector. Before you remove the rubber hoses, make sure you mark them with something so you know exactly where each one goes. I'll just use a crayon and put a little yellow mark so I know exactly where this one goes. Grab onto that, give it a little tug, pull it off of there, quick check, move along. Take hold of that electrical connector and disconnect it. Let's move along the top of the intake. On this, you're going to find that you have three eight millimeter headed bolts that hold down the crossover tube on this side. Once we have all three of these out, we'll move over to the other side and remove the other three bolts on that side. down in here. Now let's make our way over to the other side. For this, you're going to find that you have two 8 millimeter headed bolts and one 10 millimeter headed stud. Let's make our way in between this area and carefully separate it. We'll set this aside. Now that we have that off, let's make our way along the driver's side again. We've got these two tubes. You'll find inside that pack, it has one more line that comes all the way underneath this area. We'll just grab onto this, give it a little tug to separate it. Now we can take hold of this and we'll pull it over towards the center. Now let's make our way all the way on the back of the intake here. You're going to find that you have two 10 millimeter headed bolts that hold the EGR adapter to the top of the intake. Let's remove the pair of those. Let's do the same to the other. With both of those out of there, continue on along each side. You're going to find another 10 millimeter headed bolt on either side. Remove the pair.
Now let's make our way over to the other side. Almost there. All right, now that it's nice and loose, I'm not gonna risk grabbing it with my fingers. I'll use a magnet so it does not fall down. Grab that with the magnet. Now let's make our way over towards the passenger side rear mounting bolt. It's all the way back here. Now we can move into the center. Now we can move to our last two mounting bolts along the front. Now we can take hold of that upper intake, give it a little wiggle, break it free from the engine, and lift it up and away. The next thing you'll want to do is safely raise and support the front of your vehicle so we can remove the left front wheel. If you have a center cover, you can use a small prying device, carefully get in between this area and separate it. With that out of the way, continue on to your five 21 millimeter lug nuts and then remove the wheel. Now with the wheel out of the way, the area that we're going to be working is straight through here. Let's give ourselves a little bit more space. You'll find that you have this line that comes all the way down to this connector, but if you follow that just a little bit further, you'll find that that goes into a rubber hose. This is very simple to separate. Go ahead and squeeze this clamp, slide it out of the way, and remove the connector from the hose itself. Grab onto this, we'll give it a little wiggle to separate it. Once you have it off, just give that rubber hose a quick squeeze. Make sure it's soft and pliable and it's not torn, worn, or damaged. Now we'll continue on to our electrical wiring. You'll find that that comes right into this clip right here. To remove this, we'll use our trim tool. Come right along the back side of this bracket, pry it out of place. Now we can grab onto all of this and we're going to pull it forward. It's going to give us a lot more room. There we are. Now we can see right up inside there, you can find you have the exhaust manifold. And just off the top of it, you have the area where the EGR tube goes into it. Commonly for this, it's going to be stuck in there. If you had a small torch, you could try to heat this up a little bit and of course use some penetrant. To get this off of here, it'll be helpful if you have an adjustable pair of large pliers. 
You could try to use a wrench, but it's going to be a little bit more difficult than using the pliers. Let's get it on here. Make sure it's nice and tight. Turn it counterclockwise to start unscrewing it from the exhaust manifold. Now once you have that separated from the manifold, make your way back up into the engine compartment. Now that we have plenty of movement from this, we can easily access the vacuum tube that goes to the top of the EGR valve. Let's go ahead and grab one of that, give it a little wiggle and pop it off of there. Now we can take hold of this and we're going to pull it up and out of the engine. Keep in mind that the EGR tube makes its way all the way down along the driver's side valve cover. Let's bring this over to the bench. Now as you can tell, we put the EGR valve into a vise. We're using the vise to hold the valve still while we continue loosening the mounting nut for the tube. Before you loosen the tube, it's important to take note of the exact orientation of it. Because when we go to put it back together, you're going to have to tighten this before you put it back into the vehicle. So what you want to do is somehow mark this. Generally, what I like to do is just make sure that I mark along the top of the tube in some way so I know that that's the very top, and when I go to put it back together, I'll put that line back up along the top before I tighten this. Just use a file for this. The reason why I used a file for this instead of a marker of some sort is because it's possible that a marker could just rub away, and that'll be very bad because it'll be hard to align this properly. Once it's properly marked, we'll continue on with our adjustable pliers. Turn this counterclockwise to loosen it from the EGR valve. Remove the EGR tube and set that aside. Now we can continue on to removing the EGR valve from the adapter. Now for this I have the adapter in my vise holding it steady and we'll continue on to removing our two pieces of mounting hardware. There's one on each side. Use a 10 millimeter. Once you have that out, just give it a quick inspection. We're going to start that back in just a couple threads to hold the EGR valve still while we continue removing the other. Remove the EGR valve. There it is, friends. Now that we have that off of there, it's time to clean up the adapter. You'll find that you have two mating surfaces to clean. You have the side that the EGR valve goes onto. That's the one with the little nub right here. And then you have the other side right here, that that's where the bottom of the upper intake rests against. 
For this, we'll just make sure we use a flat razor blade. Remove any of the existing residue. There we go. Now we'll do the same to the other one. Continue on with a little bit of fine sandpaper. Once you feel as though you have both of the surfaces clean and free of any debris, we'll continue on with some compressed air. You want to make sure you spray out each of the ports, especially the port that goes in and through. It's common to have some debris in this area. Now that we have that cleaned, let's put this back in position. You'll find with your new EGR, it came with a new gasket. We'll take that, put it in place. Get ready to install that brand new EGR. Put that right on there. Install our bolts into their original positions. We'll just start these in by hand so you're sure they are not cross-threading. Once you have them both started, go ahead and snug them up. Once you have these snug, you can torque them to 18 foot-pounds. Let's get ready to install that EGR tube onto the brand new EGR. As I had mentioned, when we were removing this, you wanna make sure that you have it properly aligned. Otherwise, when you go to put this in the vehicle, it won't align with the exhaust manifold. So you wanna make sure you have your marking facing straight up. All right, we'll just snug this real quick. Double check to make sure it's properly placed and then continue tightening it. Make sure that's nice and tight. Grab onto the EGR tube, give it a little wiggle to make sure it cannot pivot. If it can pivot, it is not tightened properly. Let's get over to the vehicle. Slide this into place here. Now with this resting in this position, let's make our way back to the wheel well. We're going to start the tube onto the exhaust manifold. Once you give it just a couple turns to make sure that it is threaded on, do not tighten it. Continue making your way up here and continue. Now from inside the wheel well, I'll use a little bit of fine grit sandpaper and just clean up the area on the manifold that the EGR tube's going to sit. We wanna make sure that we make good contact here once we put it together.
Let's take hold of that tube, put it in place. We'll start this nut on here, just a couple threads like I had mentioned before, leaving it loose. Let's pause down here, make our way back up top. Now the next thing we'll do is come back here and reconnect this to the top of the EGR valve. This should just slide right on there. Push it on. Double check to make sure that's secure. It will be very hard to get on there once everything's put back together if you forget. Now at this point, we're going to start removing the gasket. What you'll find is all along this area, there's going to be a whole bunch of dust and debris. We want to be extremely careful not to drop anything inside of the engine. So it's a good idea to just take a couple rags, roll them up, and shove them into each port. But when you do this, you want to make sure you have it up high enough that you can remove it. If you leave even one of these rags inside of a port, you're going to cause catastrophic damage to your engine. At this point, we can continue on to removing the gasket from the top of the lower intake. Commonly, it's a good idea to go ahead and replace this gasket. At minimum, you have to at least wipe it down and give it a close inspection. If it looks like there's any damage at all, replace the gasket. Now let's continue on to cleaning up the top of the lower intake. This is the mating surface where that gasket's going to sit underneath the upper intake, so it needs to be clean and free of any debris. When you're cleaning this, try to use a small flat blade razor. You want to be extremely careful not to actually scrape or mar anything, causing any type of slashes, which could actually cause a vacuum leak of some sort. And when we're cleaning it, we want to try to pull all the debris out and away from each of the ports. So we'll just lightly clean this down. Now that we've done that, we're going to continue on with a vacuum cleaner. I just want to make sure that I get all of the debris out of each one of these ports. It's common to have some that fell down into the port and is stuck on the rags. You want to make sure, once again, nothing falls inside of any of the ports as we do so. Now that we have that done, continue on to making sure that you remove all eight rags from the engine. Double check to make sure there is nothing inside of any of your ports. Now we'll use some parts cleaner on a clean rag and clean down the mating surfaces. Now we can install our intake gasket. You want to make sure you have it in the proper positioning so that the holes line up with each of the ports properly. You'll find that the rearward holes are circular, all others are oval. Once you feel as though you have it aligned, just press it down into position. Just like on the engine, we want to make sure that we protect all of these ports. We'll just go with the rags again, push them right into each of the ports, protecting them from any debris making its way in. We also want to make sure that we plug this port as well.
continue on with your flat razor blade and clean up the area. Let's continue on with the vacuum cleaner to try to remove all the debris from each one of the ports before removing each of our nine rags. Now we can remove each of the nine rags. Parts cleaner on a clean rag. Wipe down those mating surfaces. Double check each of the ports to make sure that you have removed each of the nine rags. Once you've done that, we're going to turn this over and clean the top side. Keep in mind, you don't want to rest it down on something dirty like this bench right here. I'm just got a pad. With this turned over, let's clean each of our rectangular ports. These are a little bit hard to plug with a rag, so just be extra careful when you're cleaning them. Make sure you're scraping away from dropping things into each of the ports. Now let's have a look at our crossover tube. On this, you have two ports, one on each side. Commonly, there will be a gasket that's still on there. Go ahead and wipe that down, give it a close inspection, and make sure it isn't torn, worn, or damaged in any way. If it looks like it's reusable, you can go ahead and reuse these. This one looks okay, and do the same to the other. Now back over at the truck, I wanna to talk to you about the EGR adapter gasket that's going to be placed right in this area. But I don't want to do it before I slide the intake into place because typically this will get shifted and potentially fall either into the engine or into the belly of the engine, which is going to be a pain to get it out of there. With that said, let's take the intake and carefully put it in place. Once we do, we'll slide that gasket into place, starting each of these mounting bolts holding the gasket in place. Just a little wiggle to get it into place. There we are. Now we'll take this and slide it into place. This is going to be hard to see, as I mentioned before. It goes directly in between the adapter and the lower intake. Now let's put this into place. This is going to get in between the EGR adapter and the upper intake. Slide this in there.
continue on to those two mounting bolts as I had mentioned. Just flex this around as needed. Should be able to move around a little bit. Okay, that twisted. Starting the other one on the other side here. At this point, we're going to start in all the rest of the intake bolts. There isn't a specific order for starting in the bolts, but when it is time to actually snug them and torque them, it needs to be done in a specific sequence. All right, that one started in a few good threads too. Let's move to the center. Keep that nice and loose, but start it in there. Let's get this bolt in here as well. Now let's reach all the way back there and get that rearward one on the driver's side as well. It's a little harder to get to. We want to turn these in as far as you can by hand, but still leaving it loose so you can maneuver the intake around as needed. This will make it a little bit easier as you're trying to tighten them. Let's get those down there. That one looks good. There's that one. To get this last bolt in here, I'm going to use a magnet. I'll direct it directly into the hole, slide it down into position, remove the magnet. Carefully reach down inside there, start that in by hand as always. Now we can start snugging these. When we do this, we're doing it in a very specific order. We'll start in the center. Now that we have that one done, let's continue following that back. We're going for the center rear. We don't want to make our way all the way to the back. We just want to get just on the left hand side of that EGR adapter. Now let's make our way to the other side of that EGR adapter. Now let's move to the forward bolt on the driver's side. Forward bolt on the passenger side. Now we're going to move to the far rear bolt on the passenger side. That's that last bolt that we started in. Now we'll move to the rearward bolt on the driver's side. Now we can move to that EGR tube adapter. We're going to snug both of these mounting bolts as well. Yeah. 
Now let's continue torquing these in the same exact sequence. To torque these, you want to make sure you torque them to 89 inch pounds and then an additional 90 degrees. 90 degrees is a quarter turn. So there's my 89 inch pounds. Now I'm going to turn it an additional 90 degrees. There's our 89 inch pounds. Let's continue that 90 degrees. Now let's move over to the other side of that EGR adapter tube. Let's move to our fourth bolt over here. There we go. Now let's move to the passenger side front bolt. Now let's move to the far rear on the passenger side. Let's get the far rear bolt on the driver's side. Let's do our final two bolts that hold the EGR adapter to the bottom of the intake. Now that we have that torqued, let's make sure that we have our lines all the way over towards the driver's side and then continue by reinstalling our crossover tube. Slide that on there. Now we can start on all six of our mounting bolts. Snug them up. Now that we have each of these snug, let's torque them to 89 inch pounds.
now we can start reconnecting things. For each of your electrical connectors, make sure you press them in and listen for a click. Double check to make sure they are secure. We'll take that PCV hose, get it in place. Slide that right in there. Make our way up along the top. We're going to slide this on to the top of the intake here. Put this in. If yours has a clamp up along here, make sure that's nice and tight as well. Let's take this line with the two lines going into it, down along the bottom passenger side of the intake. We'll slide that right into place. Press it on as far as you can so you're sure you do not have a vacuum leak from this area. We'll continue on to our two hoses. Now we can remove the hose clamps. Now we can start reattaching the accelerator cables. Take this, pivot it, slide that into position. Reconnect this. Make sure that's completely secured on there. Get our mounting bolt holes lined up. Start in both of our 10 millimeter headed mounting bolts. Tighten them up. Now we can install our return spring. Right down in here. Bring it up to this bracket. Let's reconnect our throttle position sensor. Now let's continue on with this 13 millimeter headed stud. We'll come right along the driver's side of the intake. Start screwing that in. With that started into the intake, you can grab onto the bracket for your oil fill tube. Slide that down on there. Continue on by snugging this up. Now we can put the power steering reservoir onto that stud. Just swing this over. Now we can install our 10 millimeter nut on this. Get it in there. Snug that up as well. Get that connected in. Let's make our way all the way down here. Connect in the electrical connector and then your two rubber hoses. You want to make sure you have these in the proper orientation as when you had removed them. The one towards the rear is a little wider than the one along the front. Now let's reconnect these two vacuum lines. They can only go in one position so you can't mix it up. Connect in that electrical connector. Now we can take this. We're going to connect it in the bottom of here. Make 
make sure that's secure. Let's connect this into the top of the intake. Now we've got this last hose. We'll connect this in down along the side of the intake. Let's make sure we put the clamp back in its original position. Slide that right onto the air box. Bring this over. Make sure both of them are completely bottomed out. Once you've done that, tighten each of the clamps. Reconnect your air temp sensor and your breather hose. Let's secure these two lines. Let's get this protective cover on here. Start in all three of your 10 millimeter headed mounting bolts. There should be one on the side here. Our piece is broken, but I'll put the bolt in there anyways, just in case somebody decides they want to replace this piece. Now we can make our way up along the back side of the engine compartment. We're going to reattach this plastic piece. position. Once you have it in the proper position, continue on with your center push tab. We'll press that right down in here. Now we'll continue on with our four seven millimeter headed mounting screws down along the bottom of this. That started in there. Now that I have this side in, I'll go ahead and snug these and make my way over to the other side. secure our hose. Now we can start reinstalling the cowls. When you do this, you want to start with the passenger side. This one aligned. There we are. With that one in position, we'll do the same for the driver's side. This should just clip right in. Make sure your wiring is in the perfect spot right inside this slot. Now let's lower the hood and install all of our mounting screws. Let's start putting in these screws.
Continue on with your wiper arms. We'll take this, put it over the shaft, and then gently pull this down towards the windshield to align it in the proper positioning. Right here is a little high. Let's go ahead and swing that down. Once you've done that, go ahead and press this onto the shaft. Double check to make sure you're still aligned properly. Install your 15 millimeter nut and snug it up. Right there is bottomed out. I'll just make sure it's nice and snug. Continue on with your protective cover. Let's remove that tape, make our way over to the driver's side and do the same thing. Right there is bottomed out. Make sure it's snug. Double check to make sure it's aligned properly here. Tape off of there. Install your protective cover. Let's make our way back under the hood. Put on our locking clips. Now we can start putting on our rubber seal. It goes up along the top here. It sits right up along this ridge. Just press it down all the way across. Now we can make our way back to the driver's side wheel well. Let's continue on tightening up this EGR tube. Use my long pliers on this. Grab right onto it and make sure it's nice and snug. Right there is where it feels as though it bottomed out. Just give it a little extra. You want to make sure that you have a good seal on this. You do not want an exhaust leak up in this area. It could make its way into the passenger compartment. Now we can re-secure our wiring harness. We'll follow this tube down to its connection point down here. Make sure both of those areas are secure. Reinstall your left front wheel. Now that we have the wheel up on here, start on each of your five 21 millimeter lug nuts. Snug them up, get the wheel back on the ground, and torque each of them to 150 foot pounds. With the wheel safely on the ground, we'll torque each of these in a crisscross manner. Torqued. If you have a center cover, go ahead and put that on now. You'll find that you have five holes. Those will line up with each of your lug nuts.
Make your way over to your negative battery terminal. We'll connect this on here and tighten it up with our eight millimeter wrench. You wanna make sure this is nice and tight. Okay, friends, we've got the truck back together. At this point, hop in the passenger compartment and start up the vehicle. Let it run for a little while. Make sure you don't have a check engine light and no leaks of any sort. After that, you just want to go ahead and double check that coolant level and take it for a road test. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.